the database of content, and then the report highlights um, uh, any problems uh, that arise, any overlapping text that it finds in, in other documents. And then uh, uh, the crucial part of this is that a person, human being, actually has to uh, uh, take a look at it. So the two main components are uh, of the cross-check system are software that analyzes and compares text, but also the key feature is the database of content you check against. Because when you're submitting the manuscript, um, if you're just going out to searching the web, like with Google, uh, there's a lot of non-scholarly content out on the web. Uh, so what Crossref has done is uh, to effectively screen research, you have to compare it uh, against other research material. Uh, these this is the full text that's available on all the different publisher platforms. Uh, and often this is behind access control, the full text that isn't available on the web. Um, so uh, what Crossref has done, uh, we've now enabled Crosscheck to have access to the full text of the scholarly content in order to check manuscripts, uh, manuscripts against that, uh, that content. So uh, this again creates a very sort of powerful network uh, of all these uh, all these publishers uh, participating, uh, but uh, we then to make uh, crosscheck most effective, we decided not to develop any technology ourselves, uh, but we have partnered with a company called uh, iParadise, and uh, they have a specific technology that's used in a system called uh, Turnitin.com, and it's used at many many schools, colleges, and universities worldwide. And so that, um, uh, I'm not sure if it's actually used much here in Brazil, but in, in Europe or the US it's actually very common, but at the, not at the research level. Uh, so the main thing that Crossref was able to do with, by working with iParadigms was to create a system that would be applicable to uh, scholarly content. So looking at this process in a little bit more detail, uh, a publisher submits a manuscript that runs through the iParadigm system, which is called called Authenticate. Uh, so that then does the comparison of the manuscript against uh, the open World Wide Web. So it will search, and uh, they have a they have their own crawler that goes out and indexes the web. That can include institutional repositories, author websites, things like that. Uh, importantly, it also runs the check against what we call the cross check database. This is the full text of all the cross-ref publishers who are participating in cross-check. There's, there's an index of that content. So the manuscript gets checked against that. And then Authenticate also has some specialist resources, uh, including EBSCO, Gale, PubMed, uh, the archive server. So content is also checked against those that content. And again, a report comes back and then a person is able to analyze the report and see if there's any problem with the, uh, with the content. So just to take a little bit, look at the report in a little bit more uh, detail. So we have an article, and this has indicated that there's a 68% match, which seems high. One of, one of the problems with the system is that the percentage itself doesn't necessarily mean anything. It, again, somebody has to look at it to interpret it, but the system, uh, it's very good at letting you drill down and see where there's matching text. So you can see here, uh, a number of documents have been matched, uh, and it highlights how many words in each document have matched the manuscript that you've uh, submitted. And if we drill down and look at one of those comparisons, it lets you then compare uh, side by side. So you can see here, there's this block of text, and actually it's been exactly copied uh, in another article. So. This may indicate uh, this may indicate uh, plagiarism, but again, somebody would have to figure out what this article is. It could be a legitimate issue. It could be uh, an older, uh, the author's version of the article, something like that. So somebody somebody has to look at it, uh, and the system also will uh, catch a little bit of uh, variation. You can see here that it's comparing sort of blocks of text. Some of the words have been changed a little bit. But it's it's still able to uh, to pick it up. Uh, but there there are, there are limitations uh, to the system. It doesn't index and check photos or images. 
uh, graphs and tables uh, formula. It, it, it's only comparing text. So if you look at an article, what it's actually checking may, you know, not be obviously the full the full article. So it's a useful tool, but it, but it does have it, some limitations. In terms of what manuscripts can get uploaded to the system, many different formats. Often it's usually a PDF because that's what the publisher has as part of the editorial process. But it can be word word files and things like that. So a um, key aspect of cross-check then is when should a publisher check a manuscript that, that gets submitted. So there are three key steps in the publishing process. Manuscript submission, what's called triage, which is an assessment of whether uh, it should be published. Peer review obviously happens. Um, and then acceptance of, of the article. So in preparing Crossref, we interviewed lots of publishers about their editorial process. And um, it was interesting because lots of publishers said, oh, well, you know, our process is the normal process. And then we would talk to them, and every publisher was different. So it's hard to, you know, with Crosscheck, what we're trying to do is just provide some recommendations uh, rather than you have to do it at this point in time. So, so some publishers are checking uh, all documents on submission, although that's that's not the most common way because, of course, you have lots of documents, and if you're not going to publish it for some other reason, you know you may not want to check it against the plagiarism system during this triage session section or, or prior prior to acceptance. Um, so you could also theoretically have the author check it, but there there, there are problems with that uh, as well. So effectively, what happens is that there's an inverse relationship. Uh, when you start the process, you have a lot of manuscripts, um, and you haven't invested much in those manuscripts. As the process goes along, you have fewer manuscripts because you've weeded out what you don't want to publish, uh, but the, the time you've invested in it has gone up. So some publishers, if they check it just before acceptance, well, they've already done the peer review, they've already done the work, but they find out there's a problem then, you know, it's quite late in the process. So, so some publishers do the checking uh, earlier on uh, before they send the document out to peer reviewers, because if there are any problems, uh, they, can, they can catch them before they they waste the time of the uh, of the reviewers. So the main man manuscript tracking systems uh, have integrated uh, cross check in, into their systems, so that if somebody's using eJournal Press Editorial Manager. There's Scholar One as well. They they have ways of fitting that into their own their own systems. So one thing um, I know OJS Open Journal System has a similar thing. So that's something we need to explore is how how that could actually be integrated in in with this. But effectively, what it means is that when you're in your editorial system, it, you're able to link out uh, to uh, to Crossref uh, very very easily. Um, so. Uh, the main thing is that cross-check is very flexible, so every publisher has to make a decision about how to integrate it into their own uh, workflow and, and decide uh, how, how it should work. So at the moment, um, there are 151 publishers who are participating in cross-check. Uh, we've indexed about 30 million of the uh, 46 million DOIs uh, in the system, and um, the documents checked has been going up quite dramatically just just recently. So it's 20. So publishers of those 151 publishers, they've checked 20,000 uh, manuscripts on average now each each month, and this this just shows um, how it's increased. Uh, so what we found is a lot of publishers. Uh, uh, join Crossref. Sorry, publishers join Crosscheck. Then their uh, full text is indexed by the system, uh, and then later on they actually start their own checking of documents because it takes time for them to work out how it will fit into their their editorial uh, process. But what we wanted to do was uh, get the number of uh, documents to be checked 
to be uh, as high as possible in the system. Because obviously, if you're submitting a manuscript, uh, you want to be able to uh, have it, the broadest search across uh, the content as, uh, as possible. So this is just a list of the, uh, the publishers who are participating. It's actually most of the most of the big big publishers uh, uh, have have joined, uh, and there's a website you can go and get some more more information about it. Um, so Crossref uh, is uh, gathering a lot of momentum. More publishers are using it, so we're hoping that it'll become more of a, a deterrent deterrence factor. Uh, so we're encouraging publishers uh, to use uh, some logos to put on the content. So it'll indicate to users that this content is actually in cross-check. Because uh, uh, even if you don't uh, check your own manuscripts, so if you have your full text indexed in the cross-check system, that means other publishers may find uh, people trying to plagiarize something you published. Um, and so uh, we encourage publishers uh, to join and get their content content indexed as, as, as quickly as quickly as possible. Um, there have been some uh, news reports about uh, what's been going on. And uh, while no publishers uh, want uh, necessarily to make it to make it public, um, there's been some anecdotal evidence that uh, uh, one publisher uh, checked, uh, accepted manuscripts. So as a test, they took all the manuscripts that had been accepted for publication, and before publishing them, they checked them through the cross-check system, and 23% uh, of them had some type of problem that they needed to investigate. It didn't all turn out to be plagiarism, but in certain journals, they're actually finding a fairly high level of, of plagiarism, which is a little, little worrying. But uh, cross-check then enables the publishers to uh, uh, to check it before it gets published. And um, what steps are then taken when you when a, when you find plagiarism is is an interesting issue uh, in its own right. So part of what we're doing with cross-check is, uh, again, there's a cross-check community, there's an email discussion list. We try to provide some support in terms of guidelines and best practices. Um, you know, they're not necessarily any hard and fast rules, but by getting, we're trying to get publishers to share, share information. 